This is Wild Chronicles. Sponsored by National Geographic Mission Programs. Taking science and exploration into the new millennium. Hello everyone, welcome to the show. I'm Boyd Matson. For humans, bread is considered the staff of life, a staple of our diet. But for many marine creatures, the staple of their diet is a little crustacean called krill. It's abundant, nutritious, rich in vitamin A, but now in some areas, it's also perhaps threatened. In a harsh environment like Antarctica, it takes a lot of forbearance to raise youngsters and a whole lot of krill. A large penguin colony can consume several tons of the stuff each day during breeding seasons. Krill are little shrimp-like creatures found throughout the world's oceans. And yet, many conservationists worry that the supply of krill in Antarctica may decline because of overfishing and that could trigger a collapse of the entire marine ecosystem. Krill specifically forms the basis of the food chain in Antarctica. There's an emerging threat to all of those things in Antarctica that actually depend on them as a food source. Scientists from around the world have converged in Antarctica to study krill levels. Research vessels trawl for the tiny crustaceans to determine levels of density. It's in response to an increased demand for krill by humans. Commercial fishing vessels in Antarctica now have the technology to suck up vast amounts of krill, and they want to increase their catch. On paper, their haul seems like a drop in the bucket. Fishermen are harvesting about 130,000 tons a year, compared to the estimated millions of tons in Antarctic waters. But the problem is something called localized depletion when all the krill is removed from a relatively small area. It's like stripping the shells bare in a local grocery store, leaving a whole host of Antarctic animals with little to eat, unless they find a new neighborhood. Many colonies of Antarctic animals settle every year in the exact same breeding sites, near massive supplies of krill. It's no surprise that commercial fishermen are drawn to these same prime areas. And the human demand for krill is likely to grow because of this. Salmon, farm-raised salmon to be exact. Some krill is used in the cosmetic and drug industry, but most of the haul is used to feed captive fish. They're fed krill in part because pigments in the shrimp-like crustaceans help turn the fish a healthy-looking pink. A boom in aquaculture has increased the demand for krill at the same time that new technologies have made it easier to harvest. In recent years, one boat in one season could catch what the rest of the fleet had been catching on an annual basis. So all of a sudden, we could see a problem on the horizon. In an effort to help better manage the commercial krill fisheries, scientists are trying to discover as much as possible about its substantial role in the food chain. Ironically, the largest creature on Earth the blue whale feeds on some of the smallest of prey. National Geographic researcher John Kalambukiti studies their eating habits. Okay, I've got a new pair of blue whales up here to the south of us. The blue whale size really dictates a lot of what it has to do, and that's eat a lot. And so most of what you see blue whales doing is fairly focused on eating. These are krill jumping out of the water right here, right ahead of this whale. And if we go by it, see, look at this. Now, now, I can grab a bunch of them all and look at them jumping. A single blue whale may eat as much as four tons of krill a day, the caloric equivalent of 12,000 hamburgers. And you'll be waiting for a blue whale to surface, and all of a sudden you'll see a patch of the water turn bright red and start boiling. And you look and you can suddenly see it's thousands of krill bubbling to the surface and leaping into the air. It's a real exciting thing when you get to see it. This blue whale has incredibly effectively masked this krill and trapped it basically against the surface. It has no escape. The huge jaws open, the pleated throat expands, 
and 50 tons of krill fill water is scooped up in a single gulp. Krill are like other small marine creatures, such as herring, or a fish called menhaden. Known as forage fish, they form the lower tier of a complex food chain. Conservationists say fishermen unwittingly harm other species when they deplete stocks. Krill are emblematic of a larger problem related to what we call forage fisheries, which are big, schooling fisheries made up of small to medium-sized fish that serve as the food source for bigger fish, for marine mammals, and for seabirds all over the world. And many of those fisheries are either not managed or they're poorly managed in ways that they're being depleted with negative effects for all those things in the sea that, that actually depend on them for food. A recent survey in Antarctica indicates there are fewer krill in areas where fishermen are active and they aren't reproducing normally. But so far, it's been difficult to determine how wild animals are being impacted by krill depletion. Researchers report that some penguin colonies are suffering, but it's not clear if it's because of a lack of food or problems associated with global warming, or both. The scientists think that there may be a correlation between overfishing for species like krill and other kinds of forage fish that these animals depend on and the fact that their reproductive rates are going down, their populations are decreasing. Commercial fishing in Antarctica is managed by an international treaty. The industry wants to increase its catch limit to 750,000 tons a year. As the request is debated, conservationists warn that we must take care about when and where we harvest this giant biomass. We may be taking away food from creatures that need it to survive.